Hello guys, welcome back to Asentax, Andre Papito here. In this video, I'm going to talk about the real estate income in Belgium. So, as we said in the previous video, we are going to explore this country more and more. If you are new in this channel, Asentax talks about how to optimize your taxation in a certain country, how to uh, plan long-term relocation, optimizing your taxes. We are very, very uh, expert in Italy. We are number one channel on Italian tax optimization for foreigners, but we also so we are doing exactly the same thing for Belgium, Portugal, and soon other jurisdictions will come up in this YouTube channel. Now, in this specific video, uh, we want to illustrate how the rental income works in Belgium. This is when you want to invest in this country, you want to purchase a real estate, residential property normally, and you want to understand exactly how this country taxes your income once you put your rent, your property under rent. Now. Everybody knows that Belgium is a high uh, taxation country. So a lot of uh, your income, it's mostly taxed at 40, 50% on individual. But there are some exceptions that makes Belgium a fiscal heaven for certain kind of incomes. And at the same time, it's also a fiscal hell for other type of incomes. In this specific video, talking about the real estate income, we are going to analyze when is the case of paying almost zero taxes on rental income. I'm going to start to uh, illustrate how it works in general cases and then at the end of this video I'm going to show you which is the case where your rental income is almost tax-free in Belgium. So first of all uh, we assume that you have purchased a property in Belgium. Uh, we also in the future we will going to release a video in which we uh, talk about, we will talk about how to purchase a property in Belgium, which is the taxation on purchasing a property, so that the tax that you have to give to the state, the tax, the amount of tax that you have to give to the notary, and all the uh, surrounded, let's say, fees that you have to pay. But in this specific video, we let's just focus on real estate, because people want to know also uh, what remains in, in, in their pocket during their investment, what is the return on investment on a yearly basis, and basically understanding how much taxes you have to pay or do not pay in your income makes a huge difference. Now, first of all, let's uh, see um, when you purchase a property in Belgium, we, ha we have to divide two categories at the name of, the, of an individual or at the name of a company. So the house is at the name of a company or at the name of a physical person. So let's explore in the first case, which is at the name of individual. So. For individuals, you have three cases, okay? The first case is when you purchase a property and this becomes your first domicile, your primary residence. So you're not really purchasing a property as an investment, but you just want to live in Belgium. So it's the primary domicile or residence. Here, of course, there is nothing to pay. The only thing that has to be paid on a yearly basis is the Precompte Immobilier. What is the Precompte Immobilier? is the tax on property, okay? Precompt immobile is what is known worldwide as the real estate tax, okay? Or property tax. The second case is when you purchase a property in Belgium and it's just your second residency. It's fine, uh, you're not putting this uh, property under rent, but the Belgium states requires you to calculate your locative value. So how much would theoretically uh, worth when you put it under rent? And you have to add this locative value at the top of your global income in Belgium. So top of your income. And your global income, it's calculated between 25% up to 50%. This is the income tax on individual in Belgium. So you have the, the taxation on individual that Belgium spans from 25% up to 50%. So you have the tax brackets. And this locative value of this property becomes uh, part of this global income. So you um, have two taxation on this real estate property. The Precompte Immobilier, which is on yearly basis, is on the cadastral value. So this is based on cadastral value and on locative value if this is a second residence. Okay? Up to this moment, we realized that the second option is not nice. So having a property, owning a property in Belgium as a second residence without exploit is not a nice choice. So, and then we go to the third point that I want to put it here. So the first two points are quite 
uh, let's say, not really for investment, so let's say. So the third point is when you put your property under rent. We have the other two sub uh, situations. The first situation is when you, uh, so situation number A, when you um, give your property to companies or to somebody that uses your property in order to exploit, to, 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 to run their business, okay? To, let's say, freelancer or self-employed. So to companies or to freelancers or self-employed, so, which means that they don't use your property as a residential property, but they use your property to run their business, okay? Uh, employee. Okay, so to run the business, so that's, that's the thing. And when you are in the case A, all your income, your real perceived income will be cumulated to your global income, to the individual. So uh, you're going to tax entirely from 25 to 50%. So this solution is one of the solutions that is not really nice if you are an individual and you, per, you, you own a property in Belgium and you put it under rent. And all the income will be accumulated with your existing income um, going through the tax bracket system. Of course, I've talked already about the um, income uh, in Belgium for individual. In the description below the video, I will put the link to the video in which I explain you exactly how the tax bracket system works in Belgium. So don't miss that video so you will understand really how much taxes you're going to pay if you accumulate everything. But now let's go to the most interesting part. If we go to the option B, which is basically means that uh, we rent our property to individuals, then we're not going to pay taxes on the real perceived income, okay? So on the real revenue, but we're going to pay taxes only on the locative value or cadastral value. That's the difference. And of course, we pay the Precompte Immobiliere, which is the real estate tax on a yearly basis. But here is the very interesting part, because, for example, if we have a property that's worth something like 1,000 euro in terms of cadastral value, the, the part that will be taxed is only 1,000 euro and not your real perceived income. So for example, if you perceive an income of 1,000 euro per month, at the end of the year, you perceive 12,000 euro from the property in Belgium. You're not taxed on 12,000. So the 12,000... 12K, it's tax-free, it's zero. You're going to pay taxes only on 1,000 euro because most likely is what the cadastral value worth for your real estate Belgium property, okay? So you have this 1,000 euro that goes to the tax bracket system for physical persons, okay? So this is how it works. And here you can spare a lot of taxes. And keep in mind that if you're a tax resident in Belgium, um, we have this famous 9,000 euro of deduction of your income, regardless of your job, regardless of type of activity. So if this is only your income, of course it will be tax-free, because if you're below this 9,000, you don't even pay this 25%. You don't even pay the lowest tax bracket in your uh, global income. In case B, we go to this nice solution only if you respect this um, requirement. I'm going to show you exactly what is the requirement. So let me rewrite here again the case B. So we were in case B to individual, but in Belgium there is the difference between unfurnished per properties or furnished properties. So if you rent to individuals, we saw that only the cadastral value will be part of your global income, but only if your property is unfurnished. So this is the requirement that you have to respect, unfurnished, without basically the, the chairs, the, the, the armchairs, whatever things that makes your home habitable. So you have to rent to somebody who is willing to bring the furniture, okay? And this is something has to be written in the contract. Instead, if you rent your home uh, with furniture inside, the taxation changes because you have to rent separately the, uh, the furniture part and rent the, the, the property part in a different manner. So this is the case, let's call it case one and case two under B, and we have furnished, furnished. So here we have the like example of having 12K tax-free, and here, because we have taxed only the cadastral value in case of unfurnished, so this will be part of the tax bracket system, okay? For the furnished, you have two options. I know, it's gonna be complicated because you still have other two options. Um, one option is to write in the contract how much 
is the rent for the furnitures. And then that rent, the furnitures, let's say uh, 200 euro per month and the rest it's 800, the house. So 200 euro follow a different taxation than 800. 800 euro uh, won't be taxed, but you're going to be taxed only on the cadastral value, while 200 euro will be taxed at a tax rate of 50% flat. Or alternatively, you can opt the default solution, which is basically say the 40% of your rent that you are going to ask, it's considered rent for your furniture if you don't specify in your contract. So this, this will be taxed at 50% flat, separated from the global income. And 60% of your income is taxed following the idea of the unfurnished part. So for example, uh, 1,000 euro, the 60% of it will be 600. 600 is uh, what um, supposed to be taxed, but we going to tax it only on the cadastral value. So only the 40% of the cadastral value will be taxed. It will be uh, be part of the worldwide income. Okay. So only 600 euro will go into 25 to 50%, and 15% 50, uh, is the rest of the income that will be taxed because of the furniture. This is basically the solution that, okay, it can be considered good, but the best solution always is when you choose the option unfurnished, okay? So this is quite important. Now, let's check the case of being so company. So if you purchase a property in Belgium and you want to put it under rent through a company, then in this case, everything will be part, so at the company name, this will be part of the uh, total revenue of the company. Very simple. You perceive a rental, and this rental will be part of the, the global uh, company revenue. And then if there is a profit, you pay the profit tax in Belgium, which is 20% flat if you're a medium small enterprise, or 25% if you're an ordinary enterprise. Um, another trick, you have to be careful, because if you purchase a, a property with a company, you don't exploit, so you don't put it under rent, then the uh, Belgium state consider that property uh, like um, a benefit for the administrator. And then you have to pay the locative value uh, of that uh, company because it will be part of the global revenue. And also uh, the administrator has to pay a sort of forfait uh, that will be add on, on his income. So basically his income would be considered a little bit higher because the fact that he can exploit this empty apartment is just a benefit that the administrators is receiving, like the company car that is also using for private, uh, private reasons or other instruments that are used in the company and the administrator uses for private reasons. Those are called benefits or in Belgium are the ATN, Advantage à Nature. This is exactly how it's uh, known in Belgium. Um, last things that also is quite important, uh, a lot of you guys want to know about it, is when you're not tax resident in Belgium, and when you're not tax resident, you cannot exploit the famous 9,700 euro index and value at the top of your global income, okay? So you lose this benefit. So before tax your uh, income, um, real estate, uh, general income, you have this famous 9,000 euro that you can reduce from your global income. When you're not tax resident, this is not possible. If you purchase a property as a non-resident in Belgium, the rules that we have explained before are exactly the same without this benefit, but there is an exception. If the sum, and let's use this mathematical symbol, of all your properties, cadastral values, are equal, minor or equal, 2,500 euro, which is the famous value ca be calculated based on the cadastral value. Of course, if you want to know more in details how the cadastral value of your home in Belgium is calculated, write us in the description below the video. There is the uh, email info at sntaxa.com. You can uh, write us, we can provide you a consultation. There is also a link in the description below the video in which we can allow you 15 minutes of call free in which we can decide how we can help you in case you want to invest in Belgium, if you want to make a real estate investment. Um, so basically, the all, if you have more than one property at the sum of the cadastral value of those property are minus 2,500 euro and you're not tax resident, everything is tax free. It's not even declarable in the uh, Belgian tax file return on yearly basis. So as you can see, it's a little bit complex to explain you how the real estate income is taxed in Belgium. Uh, I want us to try to 
compress and squeeze all the possible scenarios in this video. I hope it was clear. If it's not, again, in the description below the video, you will have our email info at sntaxa.com and you can ask us clarification. We can provide you a consultation in which we can explain you exactly if a certain investment as a real estate in real estate world makes sense in Belgium and not in your case in for your specific situation. If you like this kind of content, please subscribe the channel and notification bell and like button in order to be always updated with new video for free whenever we have news from Belgium, Italy, Portugal, and in the future from other jurisdictions. Thank you, see you in the next video.